Hey everyone, welcome back to Two Rivers to Bach Book Club. We're covering Wizard and Glass, which is book three of Dark Tower. We're covering the last part of it. We just finished the book. Um, not, not a ton to cover here. Part four was fairly short compared to at least part two and three, but there are some cool things that we're going to try to talk about that we thought were interesting. And obviously, you know, there's some recurring characters in here that, that are cool to talk about. But um, I'm your host as always, Definitely. Andrew, and I'm joined by Josh today. Hello there. What's up? That was a Star Wars reference. Yes. Hello there. <laughs> Hello there. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, right. uh, yeah. Well, I guess for first things first, talking about how everyone reacted to Roland's story. Yeah. Uh, Eddie's, you know, they're kind of making a little bit of jokes, you know, because, you know, that's just how Eddie is and how he deals with. Uh, his emotions are important things and the the first scene that really stood out to me personally is when him and Susanna like sneak off so Susanna can like do her business you know in the woods and she starts crying after like glancing over to make sure no one was Roland wasn't watching or could see them or anything and then Eddie's just like trying to comfort her and what Eddie says is like when they're talking about how sad it was Eddie's like you know what I'm kind of relieved uh that that uh i thought he was gonna say that he killed her in his quest for the dark tower and then susan's like don't you understand that's what he thinks he did and i was just like holy shit <laughs> i was like eddie you stupid ass <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah susanna i like forever smarter than eddie but uh yeah no yeah. it's I'm glad you pointed that part out because I wrote that down as well. I thought that was like a really good part. I feel like just the whole reaction to to him is like super positive, you know, and I kind of I kind of wrote that, too, because it's like for a lot of the time, I mean, they like him. And of course, I like Roland and I, I know you enjoy the character as well, but it makes him seem a little less cruel now that we know that he didn't directly kill Susan, you know. Um, yeah because he literally I, killed jake a few books ago so <laughs> yeah literally book one and, just drops him off the fucking cliff yeah, like, he doesn't care he really cares but... um but now we get the actual story of him killing his mom and both susan and his mom it's kind of not i mean it's directly him when he kills his mom but he was tricked right so it's like yeah well you know, did he really kill like, his mom it's like you know it was like described to where he like saw Rhea, but then, but like a, a part of him knew it was his mom, but his like reflexes were like just too, too good, I guess. And he just killed her and he's just, you know, that traumatized anyone. He, he used the guns of his father to kill his mother. That line too. I was just like, oh my God, like. Stephen King, damn. Yeah, it's just like a, I thought that was pretty good. It, yeah, it's a really good line. It's a it's a sad book in general. It's just very sad. Yeah. Uh, you have him coming. And he's he's fourteen, right? You have him coming yeah, off 14. of leaving Magus where Susan died when he thinks it's his fault, and then immediately kills his mom. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty bad. But, and yeah. and I love how when we were talking about the orb last time. And how, like, we think how that, like, the orb has, like, the one ring powers uh, mixed in with, like, a regular orb power. And Roland was talking about that. It, it, it didn't show him everything at once or all this stuff because it was waiting for him to gain enough sanity back. But not, not for his benefit or to teach him anything, but to torture him. And I'm just like, that's one mean ball. <laughs> like, yeah, no, seriously. Like, wow. I know you talked about in the previous episode, but it being like a living thing, like a true vindictive evil thing rather than like the, I mean, the ring in the Lord of the Rings is obviously evil, but it's like more of just, it draws you in, but isn't, it's not necessarily described as like as much of a living thing as this orb is. This orb is like very calculating in how it hurts people. While well, like, the ring cause is isn't just like constantly hurting everyone around it but like it's not like calculating how to do that as much as this orb yeah well like because isn't the the ring is 
Sauron's like soul is like embedded into the ring to like gain it more magic power or something something like that. Yep. So it's like so basically the whole point of the ring is it's just trying to get back to Sauron. So whatever it needs to do to accomplish that goal it will do. But uh but the orb doesn't seem to have a goal. It's just a dick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So well, I think it goes back to a conversation we had a long time ago, and this is related to Wheel of Time. I don't want to go too deep into Wheel of Time, but like the different kinds of evil, right? You have like the Sauron type of evil where he wants to enslave everyone and like take over the world and, you know, make the world a dark place. And then you have like the Jason Voorhees type of evil where it's like, I'm just going to kill everything and I'm just like, I'm yeah, just, I'm just here like... to do everything malicious like as much pain as possible and it doesn't really matter like what the end goal is i'm just trying to be like a horrible person i feel like yeah, i get more of that jason vibe yeah. from like the orb yeah it's literally like the difference between like morgoth and uh michael myers yeah 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 it's a weird, jason, it's weird was, comparison I, like, forgot, yeah, which <laughs> yeah, serial killer we were talking about michael myers is better yeah because he's just like pure. yeah <laughs> <laughs> the shape <laughs> Yo. But uh, a lot of a lot of Kansas references in in this part. Dude, well, yes. obviously they're in they're in Topeka, but like, <laughs> but like, goddamn, like I was not expecting the <laughs> the before, um, uh, we, from Wizard of Oz stuff. Before we move on to that part, um, but I wanted to mention really quick here, just part of the reaction to like Roland finishing his story is like Roland actually starting to make jokes. So oh, I, oh my god! Yeah, yeah, and I wrote yeah the one where he's like. I wrote it down here, I think he says. So Roland says it reminds me, or uh, Eddie says it reminds me of the time I spent as a junkie. And then Roland says it doesn't everything. And Eddie's like, oh, that's <laughs> funny, really funny. Next train that goes crazy on us, you can ask it the silly questions. And it's just like... That was so funny. Yeah, you get a little bit more like... I feel like Roland telling that story not only improved his relationships with like the group how they view him but also just like he's lightening up a little bit now that he's able to get that off his chest so. i agree and and you know another joke he made is like towards the end at the, actually i guess it's at the very end uh but we'll, we'll go we'll go back to the whole wizard of oz stuff but like th this this joke when they you know end up back on the path of the beam and roland's like oh i'll never forget the this it was me i'm the one who killed her it's my fault and susanna's comforting him takes his uh, hands off his eyes while he's crying and and eddie's like don't you don't you understand you didn't kill her and he's like you saying raya killed her or whatever that's a, co a cop out basically and he's like no it was ka and then uh and then roland just goes ka ka yeah. <laughs> he made a dick joke right <laughs> although that was funny because i think eddie made the same joke like a book or two ago oh did he i don't even remember yeah that, that would be on brand think, for eddie for sure yeah I'm, pr I'm like i'm pretty sure he made that joke i want to say i want to say in the last book because i don't think he did it in the the second book but anyway um those yeah. those parts were hilarious it's like even more funny because we've been with this guy for four books, especially after the first book where, you know, he's just like wandering around in the desert, basically. Um, yeah. The context of this guy's background just makes it a lot funnier because he like never makes any jokes. He's serious all the time. So. Pretty good. So, uh, we're, uh, before we dive too deep into the Wizard of Oz stuff, what did you what did you think about it? Because I know we've had this conversation before, especially yeah. moving out of Kansas, <laughs> on how uh, people are like, "Oh, there's no place like home," or "Or where's Toto?" And I'm like, "Oh my god, shoot me now!" <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, I was gonna actually say the same thing to you, where it's like, "How do you feel about this like Wizard of Oz <laughs> sequence, <laughs> being that we're from Kansas?" Um, Honestly, I, di I didn't even really like The Wizard of Oz when I was a kid watching it. Even growing up in Kansas, I didn't even really that's like her it. That's heresy. Yeah, I know, right? I know a lot of people <laughs> really enjoy it. And if you love it, that's that's okay. But I just I didn't really like it as a kid. So, like, 
when we were gonna go down this path, I was like, of course, somebody who grew up. I think he grew up in like New England, like I think it was like Maine, Maine, right, or something, some fucking northeast state. But I was like, yeah, okay, you know, the guy who's from the northeast is gonna write about Kansas and then write about Wizard of Oz, of course. But yeah, (laughs) it's uh, it's I loved um. And I guess we're kind of getting more into the weeds now, but I lo- I loved how he described the palace and stuff though. That stuff was really cool, but I don't really care about. Oh yeah. Of Oz, but yeah, go ahead. Made a glass all green. Yeah, it was real. It was really cool how he described it. I thought that was like one of the best descriptions, like in the series so far. He like really went hard on like describing it. But yeah, what what were yeah. your thoughts on that? So, so the first like first thing, I'm just like a fucking course. You know, I mean, that was the first thought that came to my head, and so I like The Wizard of Oz. I mean, I don't like watch it. I probably haven't watched it in maybe Wait, how you're old from am Kansas I? Kansas, and you don't watch it every single day. <laughs> every 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 season of wheat farming. No, I don't. <laughs> but uh, because like right now, because like at the house I live in now, we have Wizard of Oz decorated plates hanging on the walls. Oh yeah, you're right. So. So I was like, I was trying to think. I was like, "Damn, this is this is weird." Because <laughs> I'm like, "Does every Kansas person have something about Wizard of Oz or whatever?" But uh, well, I guess you don't. So I guess <laughs> I, was like, I wasn't even born in Kansas, but I lived there. anyway. But uh, my other thoughts were just like, uh, I really like how he implemented the Wizard of Oz scenario into his book and the riddle he uses too with like uh, with the old uh yeah so like the orb and all all that other stuff he did with the shoes clicking and uh just just the way he took stuff from the wizard of oz and implemented it into his story and roland not knowing anything about it but of course the other three do it ju- it just made the entire scene kind of hilarious to me and uh and then how like the tiktok man and uh randall flag was like oz the great and powerful and that whole part cracked me up because it's like he he took such like a stereotypical like wizard of oz trope and just made it sinister as fuck <laughs> because, yeah well, especially if you've read you know but but before we get in the whole like randall flag and like all that stuff uh, uh, the scenes where they like so we know he killed his mom and so I read through this part twice because it was so short and you can tell like at the beginning uh, till till you find out he killed his mom there's a lot of times where Roland's like I don't want to talk about it uh, another night I'll, I'll explain it later and like a lot of this stuff he was referencing was this part or was the part where he was talking about his mom dying because like when they were getting the shoes and all that and uh eddie's like what's the rest of the stuff you you saw in the orb and and then roland's getting all defensive and he's like i told you i don't want to talk about that right now it has nothing to do with this and eddie's like i think it does and so like that kind of all those kind of stuff leads into the end of roland uh showing them what he did rather than telling them which I, I i like too because to us we got to witness the entire thing obviously but to them he's just sitting there talking to them but actually like being there and witnessing it is much more like hardcore yeah. absolutely so yeah and also it like but, uh, paints a better picture because if roland told it he'd probably make it seem more like he killed his mom directly but in reality it wasn't really like exactly yeah. like that so like so they're heading towards this this castle, right? It's it's diff it's like the Emerald City. The Emerald City Castle. They all they all get new shoes that they see there and they figure uh I think Jake is like, Oh, it's a riddle, but then like as they're talking about the Wizard of Oz and like cracking jokes and such, uh, there is a part where it's like Roland's Roland feels left out because he doesn't know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> it's like I just picture like Cause like at first, like Roland's this like, big serious cowboy dude, right? 
and then now since we've know his backstory and all that and he like showed his emotions it's it's now i just f- see like an old cowboy doing like a little puppy whimper and he's like mm, that'd be in the conversation <laughs> so it's <laughs> yeah it, it's always funny when the other three characters say something that's like fairly normal and he doesn't know what the hell it is because he's not from the oh you need aston yeah, or Aston, whatever he calls it. Right. Aston. I love like he, um, he literally <laughs> talking about the shoes. I love that there were shoes for Oi too. I thought that was yeah. Cool. It just made me think oh, of like really cute. my dogs when I like put the like dog little boots on them and they hate it and they walk really <laughs> weird. It's really funny. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> but, yeah. I liked when when they were all clicking their heels to open up the gate and such, and. uh they're like, oh, I guess well, he has to do it too. He's a part of the quartet, and they kind of just lay him on his back, and they all like grab his feet and <laughs> just claw. Him. I'm just because in in my mind, I have this weird like, like a uh, rat, black raccoon, uh, yeah. like dog, dog thing. It's like I mean, I don't really know how. Maybe I'll draw a picture, a very crude picture or something, to show you what I think it looks like, but. It's just it's just basically a real fucked up version of Toto and then you have like the other four. So they have they are like have enough people as the Wizard of Oz, you know, four people and the dog. Right. So and then uh what Suzanne gets what did they call them like booties? Yeah, the booties. for like the stumped legs. Yep. Uh and then Roland got cowboy boots that looked real fancy and i just imagine like they just they're very flamboyant (laughs) is how i (laughs) he's bright red cowboy boots i'm just imagining this roland with all his like (laughs) shit clothing and then this like very flamboyant boots yeah no this yeah this whole sequence was like kind of nice because it was just kind of funny when the last two parts were like so serious most of the time so it's kind of oh, yeah. just to like end on like a comedic and note what do you what do you think about like this the description of like the gate where it it was like it looks like there's a bunch of people or things like drowning in the in the pipe or whatever they called it yeah uh, it's creepy and then when they go yeah. inside yeah they have they describe the wall. I don't know if it's the wallpaper or the walls or whatever. Like just faces screaming, like very creepy for sure. Yeah, then it's like all the bars and like everything was like the color of a rain of the rainbow, yeah. and they all represented the the orbs. Right. And I remember like Jake doesn't want anyone to touch it, and Eddie like grabs it, and they're like Suzanne's like no, and then Eddie's like who. Well, I guess we know it's not electrocuted. I'm just <laughs> like, well, that just reminds me of Jurassic Park where oh, yeah. uh, Alan yeah. Grant is like going to test the gate and he like grabs it and goes, ah, ah, and then the kids are freaking <laughs> out. <laughs> and then he looks at them and the girl, the little girl's just like, that's not funny. And Alan, <laughs> he's just smiling. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. I didn't that's even super- think about that. That's funny, though. It was another like comedic moment there where he like didn't like explode or anything i aim with my heart motherfucker god <laughs> i love that line oh okay that was from the the previous book but god i love that line pretty good but uh so you know they get they get in there uh they walk around and they get to the door and it's oh they find like some newspaper how did you oh, like yeah. that part where it just went blah 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 char blah blah train <laughs> blah 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 shit blah blah and it just kept going on and on it's it like done really... this before yeah and i'm just like <laughs> i was like listening to the audiobook and it's like out of nowhere it's like it's just yeah, rolling the numb, they all pick up a newspaper and it read blah 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 and I'm like, God fuck my ear. Yeah, the audio should have been mixed a little better. Um, but yeah, it was funny though. It was a funny Yeah, it was it was hilarious. I was like I was in my head I was like, How how many blahs is there gonna be? Dude, I can't imagine reading it on the page. There's so many. I imagine. Yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. You wouldn't read that shit. You would look at it and then you'd turn the page over it. I can't remember. This is where they also like 
uh, show the pronunciation of Charyu, Cheryu. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that was in the last... Well, it was in the beginning of this part and the end of the last oh, yeah. part. It was like how Roland... It's like... It was like Roland using it and then when uh, Suzanne was Suzanne was talking to Eddie, she was like, Charyu tree. Uh, yeah. The death death to the trees, I guess. Or, I don't know, is tree a slur? <laughs> Char you tree. Char you. It reminds me a little bit of uh, Lord of the Rings as well. Like having your own like high speech language. Kind of reminds me of like Tolkien, like making up Elvish. So, yeah. And Tolkien's like a god. Yeah, he's a god. <laughs> making languages. Well, he <laughs> studied right. like linguistics, so I mean, it makes sense that he. Yeah, I mean, he was like an English teacher or something, right? Or, yeah, he um, he also studied like languages and stuff. So, yeah. Makes yeah sense. What a guy. Can't make uh, a fucked up uh, Wizard of Oz interpretation though. That's all Stephen King. Yeah, can't do that. Yeah, I want to come back to me with Tolkien when you find a passage of 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 an elf or some evil demon fucking a snake. All right, maybe like a (laughs) bullrog, and then and then I'll I'll be interested. Yes, that's the best part of this series. (laughs) But. uh, but yeah, so they see the newspaper tells them don't go for the tower, or maybe that's later. Either way, I think it's later uh, as well. Yeah, they, yeah. So they they continue to the door, and it's like knock on the door, and Roland's about to knock, and Suzanne's like, "Fuck that!" <laughs> Just walk in there. And Roland's like, "Okay." So, uh, before before we walk in and get into this whole scene, is there is there anything else you want to? You want to go through before, or are you good? I think I'm good. I think I've covered everything here. Cool. So this scene, uh, this whole scene is probably my favorite in the whole book, and the reason for that is because I've read The Stand. When Ra- Randall Flag and his whole shtick and his whole character, I love. So every time I see him in this in this series, I just get like a boner. <laughs> he's got to be inspired by the Joker, right, or something like that. I mean, he just like, he just gives me that energy, you know, like when he's talking and stuff. Yeah, he's basically like a Joker character. Like he's like yeah. he's a sleazy, uh, sociopath, and he's he's kind of like the, the if a con man was a serial killer or a demon. Gotcha. You know. Yeah. So like. So like they get in there, uh, you know. Then the the smoke starts coming up, and it's like a face is vaguely seen telling him to come back tomorrow. You know all that stuff. So like it's following the Wizard of Oz movie, right? And so Oi, Jake sees that Oi finds the uh, curtain or whatever, and then they pull it back, and it's the basically like the corpse of the TikTok man yeah. comes at them, and. Uh, so at at this point, it's just Eddie and Suzanne, who's Suzanne, who have Roland's guns, right? So Susan shoots him, I think gets him in like the chest or stomach around that area. And then I think Eddie's the one who shoots him in between his eyes and, and cut, lays the corpse down. Yeah. Uh, but then, because I know <clears throat> I've talked to you about this theory a little bit, I didn't want to get too much into it because you hadn't read The Stand. But now, now it already kind of happened in this in in this scene anyway, to where the dark man, in of it of himself, is a demon, but then he like takes over other bodies of such and can can control them, kind of blends both minds together. Okay. And that's how the TikTok man was still alive, but now the TikTok man's dead. Because after it's like his shadow like moves onto the throne, it it was like a completely different entity. I see. And and then even in there's the scene in the stand, not necessarily like this one, uh, but since you haven't read the stand, I don't really want to talk about it. So and this is Dark Tower, so I don't want to say anything from the stand in case no one's read it. So maybe if one day we'll do like a big Stephen King discussion where we can talk about everything. But yeah. just for non-spoilers' sake, I won't say anything. 
Uh, but this part was my favorite because not only do we find out, I well, like it's confirmed that now like the Dark Man is Walter from from like the first book, uh, and he is Randall Flag. He's like, so what? What name do you go by these days? He's like Randall Flag, and I was like, oh shit, fuck yeah! <laughs> so. <laughs> And now it's like I want to go back and reread the stand and see if there's anything in that book that talks about like the dark man heading somewhere or if he was here because like going by the time frame uh this this would have to take place during the second part because like the third part he's in he's in Vegas like the dark man's in Vegas and and all that, so it would it would have to take place during the second part. But then I'm like, so the the Dark Man or Randall Flag just has like these weird demon tele not necessarily like teleportation powers, but it's some something to move around quickly. And right. I'm just gonna assume that's just gonna be a supernatural ability of his that will never be explained. It's just kind of a power he has, and you have to accept. So, and then, then I know it goes into Roland, Ed, Eddie giving Roland the gun, and then Roland's like, fuck you, you know, and starts shooting him, but then he, like, disappears, and Roland's like, I know he's not dead, he's somewhere. Right. And then that's when the, the orb comes back, but bef- I guess before we go in the orb, since you've, you've never read The Stand or anything, you've, and... What do you feel like of like the TikTok man, Randall Flag, the Dark Man, the Tall Man? What's your Martin. whole thing on, on him so far, Martin? Martin. Rod Cloak. <laughs> or yeah, <laughs> well, I will never call him by that. He's Broad <laughs> Rod Cloak. Is Martin, kind of, kind of a gay name, but yeah, I like yeah. the other names better. Um, <laughs> it's not very PC. I want to talk. About, I want to. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk about the TikTok man's description because he was absolutely nasty, dude. Like, his eye hanging out, fucking, like, slab of skin hanging off. And I know Jake described it as, like, his worst nightmare. But, yeah, that was... I'm glad he's dead. That guy sucks. How how did I not recognize his voice before? Because now it seems so obvious. Right. And it's like... (laughs) And it's... I just like it's like the body's uh this demon because I'm not because like I don't want to call it like he, like the demon itself like his main whatever his main name is is not Randall Flag because he like changes names uh by the, like the people he possesses so then if like if we like go back and look at like Walter or or Martin and it's like he basically took over another person's body and like manipulated their mind, you know, into, into becoming like a bad person, you know? So it's like, that's, yeah. uh, it's, it's the interesting lore because it's like, what were these people before the dark man? Cause like, again, in, in the stand, there's a, there's a sec, a section with, a very very small section that like goes through a, something but uh yeah damn it read the stand <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like... <laughs> i think he's a i think he's a cool enemy though i mean i think it was cool you know we had the whole sequence in the first book um of him chasing him the whole entire time and finally reaches him at the end by paying the ultimate price of sacrificing jake but um it's cool that he he's recurring and obviously like when we get to the dark tower there's probably going to be some kind of face off if there isn't one prior to that so mm-hmm. it kind of it's a cool enemy cuz we still keep getting to hear about him it's not like he just appeared in the first book and then we just don't hear about him again until we get to the dark tower so i like yeah. that he like is he pops in and he's like hey remember i'm here motherfucker yeah it's like oh. but yeah I, I was i was about to make a c- 
comparison with Wheel of Time, and then I was like, oh wait, that's a, probably a spoiler, so yeah. I'm not gonna say it. But uh, I got what you're thinking though. It's it's yeah, it's, uh, yeah you know, it's a criticism <laughs> we have of the Wheel of Time, but it's a it's good in this book. Go go read the Wheel of Time books, and you'll know what we're talking about. Yeah. But but anyway, so that whole I do, I do like this re reoccurring villain and i'm glad like the dark tower seems to have an overall villain but we still don't know like the purpose because we still don't really know what the dark tower is or what we know kind of what it does that basically holds reality together and with time and space and all that but we don't know how and we don't really know anything about it so we don't really know why the dark man uh, wants to keep them away. So these will be this will be interesting uh, stuff, you know, to finally to find out. And I don't think we will get it in the next book. We I think we might get some in Susanna's song and then the last book that's just called The Dark Tower. Yeah. So I'm start now. I'm really starting to think that they won't even make it Dark Tower. Little the last book yeah no it, it kind of seems that way i'm i'm excited to kind of see like you said what it really is because up until this point we just know it yeah it holds it holds all the realities together and it's causing things to move on but other than that we don't really you know understand what it is yeah so. all i know is that most people think the ending is eh right. so yeah we'll see yeah we'll see but um yeah, well, I guess the the next part after Randall Flag, uh, the Dark Man, the Tall Man, the TikTok Man. Or... <laughs> Martin. Well, he Black. might have more names than uh, Martin Black. All the other names are fine. <laughs> that name sucks though. <laughs> Walter. That's kind of a random name too. Yeah. Walter. Kind of just picked random old guy names: Martin, Randall. Randall Flag. I've never it just met rolls off named the Randall ever. <laughs> I've met Randy's. I've met plenty of Randy's, but Randall, I've never heard anybody go by Randall. Oh, well, did you used to watch a uh, recess as a kid? No. And, no? Really? No. Like that cartoon? No, I don't think so. Oh well well the the snitch the snitch in that show, like the kid snitch, is named Randall. So basically anybody named Randall is the worst. Uh, yeah, they're yeah, you're fuck, either a fuck snitch people or named you're Randall. A demon, so. Yeah. <laughs> what would you rather be? <laughs> uh, a demon, honestly. Probably a demon, no yeah. Honor, so. I definitely no. I well <laughs> read the stand. <laughs> Listen, this guy's got but, more honor than a snitch, probably, but I don't know. He probably does. Oh, he's probably I don't fucking know. worse. No, he's he's fucked. He, he gives me heavy <laughs> joker energy. Like he gives me like Dude. heavy like sociopath energy that like and i i just anytime i hear him i just think of all the things that the joker's done and i'm like if in stephen king's universe he could take it to the next level because like in dc comics and shit i mean sometimes it gets pretty dark with the joker and the batman don't get me wrong but like it's still you know superheroes they can't go like too ridiculously insane but with stephen king it's like there's no limit with this motherfucker so yeah like, yeah. yeah i mean i've like you know i haven't read a whole lot of books with uh the dark man in it besides like the stand in the dark tower series but from what i have read he's basically stephen king's joker makes sense so uh so yeah so after he flees the pink orb drops we don't know how he got it we didn't i guess the witch had it at some point but after uh blah 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 anyway i guess i'll just go in chronological order actually be easy easier to talk about roland's like okay uh i know what i have to do i'm going to show you guys my past and so they all touch the orb or whatever and they all see what roland did but i'm thinking that they actually like went into like roland's memory so they didn't go into the past per se but because when they get out of it, Roland's like, they were like, were we actually there? And Roland's like, yes, 
you were there and I was there and I had to do it all over again and like all this shit. So it's like, I don't think they were like, like physically there as in, as if they time traveled, but more as in they're altering, uh, his memory. Mm -hmm. Like they're going in like physically, mentally going into his mind. Right. So, and then the ball was helping with that. And then, you know, it goes through the whole thing of Roland's mom hiding behind a curtain with uh, with a belt that she made for him as like a peace offering and all this stuff. Yeah, and there's a and little his bit name's of, uh, signed on it. controversy there because obviously Roland wants to remember his mom in a good light. So he thinks that it was a gift. But then Susanna's like, you know, maybe it wasn't. Maybe she was going to like strangle you or something or kill, yeah. kill you. So, like, you know, um, I get you. We'll never really know. Maybe we'll find out, like, later in the books if whether her intentions were positive or not. But obviously, she's dead. So it's like, but, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to assume they're positive just, just because the way Roland described how it had his, like, name carved into it and, yeah. And, like, blah, blah, blah. But, and I'm I'm that's just how I'm gonna want to think of it, <laughs> but then yeah. that makes it even more sad because, uh, because then you know, Rhea pulls the trick on him and is like, "This is for killing my snake, you squint cunt." Right. Right. She doesn't, <laughs> it she was the call best fuck cunt, in the land. So I mean, yeah, you know, I mean, you lose your it fuck was snake. yeah. I mean, dude, I'd be pissed too. I'd make you kill your mom over my fuck <laughs> snake. <laughs> yeah that seems like an appropriate punishment for killing a fuck snake for sure yeah <laughs> well, i'm making that a t-shirt yeah <laughs> don't kill my, my fuck snake, snake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just a picture of ermont like dead uh, yeah <laughs> i'll just uh i'll make another coffee cup and i'll send you <laughs> send you a, a, another coffee cup a conversation starter anytime somebody like sleeps over and you get your coffee out and you're like what does that say <laughs> they're saying? like what the fuck <laughs> where'd, you, where'd you get that oh my friend made it for me yeah. what <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah but yeah oh, okay so yeah the, <laughs> so they're trying to talk to roland and tell him hey don't do this blah 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 and, but roland can't hear them because you know he's doing his thing it's a memory you can't you know you know, fuck Alter with it, it. Yeah. fuck with what actually what happened. So, right. but then what, what surprised me, and I think this also has to do with the orb is so they said that Rhea now looks like the wicked witch of the West, right? Or was it the East? It doesn't matter. They're both yeah, they're ugly. Both bad. Yeah. So now another wizard of Oz thing where they like the witch is green now. And, uh, this part was pretty cool. Because then she, I don't know how the fuck, like, she must still be a, alive or somewhere, or maybe just her spirit is entwined with the orb. But then she starts talking to Eddie, Susan, and, and Jake, or Suzanne, I mean, and she's like, uh, she's like, pull off your quest for the Dark Tower. Don't go along with, with Roland of Gilead, or whatever, whatever she says. And she's like, don't you ask him what he's, have you seen? He killed his own mother. Uh, ask if ask Cuthbert or Ellen or Susan if you could. Everyone, everyone he's friends with, he kills, and, I'm, and, and they're all just like fuck off, witch. We're not giving up on the Dark Tower, and so, and then she like starts melting or something. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. Did they pour water on her, or is she just start melting out of nowhere? I, I don't remember if they poured water, but yeah, she like starts to like die. Yeah, what do you what do you what do you think about that? Do you think the witch is alive or is it, or what? Like I'm confused. But yeah, I mean, I uh, Rowan doesn't uh, directly say that he killed her, but he does say he encounters her again later on after the incident with his mom. So I don't know if he kills her or if she's still around, but I guess I will guess we'll find out either in the rest of the series or the Winter the Keyhole book. But, yeah. Well, I don't think I don't think the went through the keyhole. I think it'll probably take place after his friends are dead because Stephen King wrote it after he finished the Dark Tower series. So 
uh, I think we'll probably get the answers to Cuthbert and Elen probably in the next book or the book after. Uh, I don't. I don't think he'd wait till a four point five. You know, to put that story in, because yeah. now it seems like such a major plot device or something that we'll need to know before we reach the Dark Tower. Yeah, no, I could definitely see that as well. But, but uh, yeah, so they get out of their trance, they wake up miles away, all muddied up and tired, and, you know, they all they all get up, and then we already talked about Roland, like, crying, talking about uh, his, uh, he's like, I killed my mom, this is not, it's not something you can ever get over, and then Susanna is like, no, it's not your fault, blah, 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 you're tricked. And then Eddie, Eddie's like, no. And then they go back and forth, and he's like, no, it was Ka. And then Roland's like, Ka, Ka, and you know. <laughs> and, uh, yep. and then they just kind of, they're on the path of the beam again, yeah. and they take off their shitty shoes. Uh, Oi, Oi lost a shoe on the way. Yep. And uh, they continued on their journey, I guess. Yeah. I wanted to talk about, or I guess, do you have anything else you want to talk about within this part? No, I'll, I was just kind of giving a, a quick overview of the next shit so we could like talk about it and, and end off. So you're, you're good. You talk about whatever you want. Okay, yeah. No, I like the, so there's an afterword from Stephen King, like after this part ends and, you know, we're going to go on to the next book. But, um. He talks about how there's 26 years that have passed between when he wrote the scene of Roland beating Court and then the scene of his dad finding him the next morning with the prostitute. Um, yeah. It's crazy. And like, I, and I, I thought that there wasn't that big of a time difference between the first book and this book. Um, and there isn't technically like publication wise, but he apparently he like rewrote the first book. Like, he wrote it, and then he rewrote it, and then published it. So, like, he when The Gunslinger, the first book, was actually published, it was a while before the first one was actually published because he was, like, writing it for a long time. So, it's kind of crazy that there's been so much time spent between that. It kind of took me on a Wikipedia hole because I was just, like, seeing, you know, how long it took him to write all these, but... On his website, it does say this is like his magnum opus, at least in his opinion, this series. And I guess that makes sense mm -hmm. considering how long it took him to wrote, write all this shit. But, yeah. Uh, then, then it brings all his, a lot of his books together, yeah. like his whole, his whole myth, uh, mythos. Yeah. Like, uh, like in, yeah, in his author notes, he was talking about how like the priest from Salem's lot is going to be in the next book. Yeah. And, uh, and then he talked about Randall flag returning and he's like, he's like, I didn't know that these characters were going to, and I didn't, he's like, I didn't know that I was going to bring them back. It just sort of felt right. And it just happens. And he's like, I'm glad to see them again. And I'm like, me too. Yeah. Except I haven't read Salem's lot. So, and I'm, don't think I'll have time to read it before the next book, but I honestly don't think that reading all these other books are going to be necessary. I think they're just going to be more like fun Easter eggs. Yeah. So probably like after we finish Dark Tower, we just like go through a list of like other books that will connect to the Dark Tower. I think that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, I think that would be uh, super fun to go go and read those books and see how they intertwine. Yeah, but I I like at this point we're so far in. I'm like I don't want to read all these other books. I gotta read uh, the Dark Towers. So. And I think it's like you said. I feel like usually the way Stephen King writes it is they're just kind of like Easter eggs, like you said. There's fun things, but it's not gonna like alter the plot if you haven't read yeah. the other ones. But because um, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. They do. Like, cause like on that list, there's it, yep. but I don't know if the creature itself is going to show up or if it's going to be like other characters from it, or if it even has any characters at all, or if it's just, a, just a random Easter egg of something that says Pennywise or whatever. Like, I have no idea. Yeah. I'm or curious like... to see how that, how that will be reflected. I mean, I know you mentioned the Georgie thing. 
So that's yeah, already like a, a, a slight it reference there. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see if Pennywise or something like Pennywise, because obviously Pennywise can like shape shift and stuff. So it doesn't necessarily have to be the clown, but it could be, you know, um, something else. But yeah, I'm excited to see for sure. Yeah, me too. Especially I was, like I know like The Shining was on the list. Yeah, yeah. But are we are we gonna meet Jack Torrance or or are they or is it just on the list because The Shining is like the, the touch. touch, right? Yeah. You know, or I don't know the, the priest like Stephen King says the priest from Salem's Lot's gonna be the next book. I've never read St- Salem's Lot, and if I saw the movie, I'm pretty sure it's probably almost nothing like the book. I have no idea, mm-hmm. but uh. I don't know. Does he have the shining? I mean, he's a priest. Who knows? Yeah. Well, I'm. I'm. It would be really cool to go back and read those books to, like we said, to kind of see. But yeah, it'll be cool. Yeah. I also liked how we talked about. Um, I mean, twenty six years is insane. I mean, twenty six years yeah. is older than both of us. I'm twenty five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a long <laughs> time. So it's. It's. I like the part where he talked about how. He's a lot older now compared to when he started the series. So, like, he understands mature love. Like, he's been married for a long time. He understands, like, you know, strong marriage and, like, love from that perspective. But he doesn't remember how it is to be, like, with, like, young love as much. So, he struggled a little bit when he was writing the Susan and Roland parts when they were young. Um, And he was talking about how he modeled it after, you know, I think it was somebody in his life who was like young or whatever, but I thought that was well, interesting because I thought he did a good job. I mean, pers- I mean, I'm 24, like I'm not like 16, but I don't yeah. feel like I'm that <laughs> far removed from how we were, and we've talked about it too, like how we were when we were that age. I felt like it was fairly accurate, honestly. So I thought he did a good job. I didn't realize yeah. he struggled like, so much, so much to like wrote, write those parts. Well, like. I I could see I could see why you know because like writing writing like love is a hard thing because lots of people yeah. don't even really understand what that is for or, sure or much, much how less to express like a, it much less like an older person trying to write about like sixteen year olds yeah like fourteen year olds and like in in that author's note he talked about like he said he like he looked like the person who told him how to write like that, like he looked through the eyes of that 14 year old boy. So like, obviously he was like, he was basically putting his mind into the, eye, uh, like through, he was trying to see through the eyes of Roland and how, how would Roland react to this? So doing it. And then, you know, then he's in his notes. He's like, if it comes out good, thank the kid. If it comes out bad, then, blame blame whatever got lost in the translation and it's like right. that's fair and i, I think i think he nailed it to yeah. be honest no, like, I, I think I he absolutely he nailed it yeah no i thought he did a really good job i think i'm sure being an author of his caliber he's very like you know nitpicky on himself and he's probably hard on himself sometimes but like i mean i think he did fine but yeah. he probably keep him modest right yeah i think he's stressed <laughs> about it because he's just you know it's his book i get it but, yeah. yeah but uh what's your oh in the in the author's notes stephen king said that who knows maybe someone won't make it through the next book and yeah. and uh on the he's like maybe not all will make it to the dark tower so now i'm just like fuck spoiler <laughs> <laughs> no but if he if he wrote it in there then you know he's just building suspense so it's not confirmed right well it is if you've read the books but i haven't so i don't know so (laughs) i mean i I figured with stephen king you know some of these characters are gonna die just because it's stephen king Um, obviously roland probably needs to survive at least until the final sequence but yeah sure some of these characters are i'm preparing myself mentally for some of these characters to like die I don't want them to die. I, I think know. they're gonna kill off Oi. Yeah, no. I mean, the the animal is obvious. The obvious quick choice. To yeah. Kill. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he almost well, died in the other book. So. Yeah. Like, I don't think they're gonna kill off 
Susan Susanna either because like the second to last book is called Susanna's Song. Right. So you or you, Susan's or wait. I think it is Susanna's. I got to look. Yeah. You, I mean, you'd it? figure she'd have to survive until that book, but maybe she dies at the end of the book prior. And then Susanna's Song is just like some kind of thing that they're investigating, I don't know, but I was like, there's Susan and Susanna. Okay, it is Susanna. Yeah, Susanna's the present yeah. day. It's like, confusing because the names are similar. Yeah, Susan, Susanna. Okay. So, yeah, so it can't be... Su- we know for sure it's not going to be Roland, and it's not going to be Susanna. That leaves either... I don't think it's going to be Jake either, just because they're all the pain Roland went through to get him and how they already killed him off on the first one and made it mm-hmm. such a big deal. Mm-hmm. I don't think he'll die in the next one. So... It's either to me. It's either going to be Eddie or Oi, mm-hmm. but I think it's it still might be a little too early to kill Eddie. But then again, there's only like excluding four point five. There's only three books left. So if you were going to start killing people off, this would probably be where it is. Yeah, and I mean, if you want to kill Eddie in like a dramatic way, you could. Since he still doesn't know that she's pregnant, he could like die in the next book and then right before he dies being like Susanna could be like I'm pregnant with your child and then he dies and then yeah and then like dramatic. his soul will go into her baby and then Susanna's <laughs> song would be her giving birth to Eddie <laughs> <laughs> hell yeah and then boy eating boy the eats the baby <laughs> this is, this is in like the tall Stevie grass to me so. it does, oh my god that <laughs> I was just about to say that. Yeah. That's all grass, true. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, who who wrote that sequence? Uh, Joe Hill and Stephen King. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! But, uh, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so I'm just gonna say predictions for the next Dark Tower book. Mm-hmm. I think I think always gonna be the one to die. Yeah, and. They're going to be at a town called Thunderclap. So they're going to be clapping some thunder cheeks or something. I don't know. <laughs> the name. So the, the name. The name is what cracks me up. <laughs> sure. Yeah, it is. It's only because of modern day. I know. Slang. Like back in the day, That's it wouldn't be as sexual. But like, yeah, because <laughs> it's like so, yeah, cause like, sounds like the like name the, of like a gay nightclub. <laughs> like it does not sound like a fucking cool place. <laughs> I, uh, I thought it. I thought it sounded like, like an uh, a juicy, juicy pair of thighs and ass just <laughs> clapping, <laughs> thunder clap. Yeah. But uh, damn it, it's but it, like it sound to me it sounds like badass. But then it's like with modern day slang, I'm just like, oh jeez, that did not <laughs> that didn't age didn't well. Didn't age well at all. No, no. It, unless that unless Stephen King is you know meaning it like that you know yeah which could perfectly <laughs> be what he means because he's weird so let's uh because you could say it's bussin no cap no cap for real bro. no cap god i fucking hate that shit <laughs> <laughs> it's funny to say it's, it ironically it's just it is funny to say it ironically it was like it's just like back in like middle school when people were like, "Oh, that's so beast." I'm like, "That's yeah, so sure. gay." Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so, just it's just part of the young young people. Yeah, yeah. Yo, man, swag. swag. God, I hate that shit too. I hate sl- modern slang. It's terrible. Just say something's cool, sick, or or beast. No, I'm just gonna. <laughs> I don't know, it doesn't matter. I'm, I sound like an old man. Even oh, say whatever is, you like, want. Kind of crazy now, like people don't. When we were in college, savage was the thing, and now it's like, not oh, like, that's so savage. That's so savage. I don't know. It's. I feel like all this slang just sounds super cringe to me. Like when people yeah. say swag, I'm just like, bruh. I don't know. I don't know. Who am I? I'm just a white boy from Kansas. Yeah, we're not hip. <laughs> from Shawnee, uh, Kansas. We're not hip anymore. No. I only listen to. Like NWA, and that's it. <laughs> it's like, classic, though. Yeah, it is. I like it, but I mostly just listen to rock. But that's fine. Anyway, we're getting off topic for a Dark Tower book. So, what's your predictions for next book? 
Yeah, similar. I think either Oi will die or Eddie. Those are really the only two. I mean, unless Susanna's song is like, I don't fucking know, like some song or prophecy that she's going to discover and then she dies and then they fulfill that in the next book. But yeah, the, the book being named Susanna's song implies that she will survive. And yet, I don't think Jake's going to die. I feel like if Jake's going to die, it has to be at the end. Like if Jake's going to die, yeah. Roland has to betray him again and kill him. So like I feel God. like he's not gonna especially and also they just went through all that effort of getting him like I mean they had to go through the effort of giving getting Eddie and Susanna into their world too, but like Jake was like a whole other right or, ordeal. Like it was a fucking really long sequence to get Jake into it, the mid world. So like I feel like That was basically half of the third book. Yeah, it was, it was just, just a getting very Jake long sequence. So I I feel like Jake has to make it at least at least until the final sequence, but you know who knows? It's Stephen King. You never know. Yeah, so, it'll be fun to find it'll out. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I'm excited. But too bad we're we're reading of Mice and Men, and then we're going back to Wheel of Time, yeah. so it might take a while. Yeah. <laughs> but I I am getting ready for Wheel of Time. I'm getting kind of hyped again. Me too. Winter's man. Heart. It feels like we haven't been on it in a while because this Dark Tower book was a lot longer than the previous three. So it took us a little longer to get through this one. So I'm excited to go back to the Wheel of Time. But I guess we should mention as well, yeah, we're going to be releasing like a Of Mice and Men analysis. Or, I don't know, not analysis, yeah. but fucking video next week. Talk, so, talk through. Talk through. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so if you'd like to follow along and you want to read Of Mice and Men or if you've already read it, that's great. But know feel free to follow along with us and then yeah we'll start start wheel of time which is yeah. you, i think you said it's winter's heart right the next one. yeah winter's heart yeah. Okay. book nine cool so yeah how many i guess we'll, should we just do the standard 10 chapters that we normally do i guess with winter's heart winter's heart yeah well, I haven't looked at it yet, but I'll probably just stick with ten chapters for now and see how it goes. Okay. That's that's not gonna be for another two weeks. Oh yeah, true, because we're uh Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're just sometimes it's nice to kinda just take a little break between these long series and just yeah. do something small. Yeah, I agree. Relax the brain. I agree. But uh Yeah, we'll do the whole thing. Like we're not gonna put my cement into parts. I mean it's like a Yeah. I mean, Four hour audio book. Yeah, it takes like a hundred page hard copy book. Yeah, it's not long at all. But yeah. Um I well, guess is there anything else well, before I kinda do the outro here? This was quite the palaver gunslinger. <laughs> they use palaver a lot again in this book too. <laughs> I love that word. Yeah. I'm using it in my daily talk now. Right. I've it's never funny. heard of it until this series. So. <laughs> well, I'm I'm good on this one. Okay. Um, well, if you listen through this whole episode, we appreciate it. Thanks for sticking with us. Like we said, we're gonna go over mice and men next week, so we're just kinda taking a break from Dark Tower, um, and the big series is we're reading, just reading like a short thing. So feel free to read that as well. Um, again, thanks for listening. If you'd like to give a comment or a like to our videos on YouTube, we'd appreciate it. And if you're listening to it on any podcast app like Spotify or Google Podcasts, feel free to give us a review. We appreciate the feedback. I love you all already. All <laughs> nine of you. <laughs> or some of the subscribers, I don't know. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and everyone else. a couple else. new subscribers. Baby steps. Baby steps. Baby steps. <laughs> all right. Well, until next time, thanks for listening. Yeah, smell you later, Red. <laughs>